Hey y'all, welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're gonna tackle a leak code problem that you've probably encountered before, number 88, Merge Sorted Array. After that, we'll cover a variant of the original question. This variant is slightly different, not by too much, but it is enough to throw some people off. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're given two vectors called nums1 and nums2. These are sorted in a non-decreasing order, which just means they're sorted from smallest to largest. We're also given two integers, m and n. m represents the number of elements that are in the nums1 vector, and n represents the number of elements that are in the nums2. The requirement for this problem is that these elements must be merged and sorted together inside of array nums1. And because there are n zeros specifically reserved in nums1 for the same n numbers in nums2, there will always be enough elements to merge both vectors. There is a solution that requires extra space, big O n, where we can go ahead and use a two-pointer approach. However, the problem statement requires for this to be done in place. Furthermore, Meta really likes their constant space solutions anyway, so what is our algorithm? Let's go ahead and walk through this example. Well, to do this in place, we'll have to overwrite the zeros in nums1 from the end. What we can do is use not two, but three pointers. Let's have a pointer say i, and it's going to be at the last index of nums1. How we compute this is we add m and n, which is 5, and then we do have to minus 1 to get the index of 4. We're going to have another pointer called a. This is at the last number of nums1, or the nth element. And then we're going to have b, which will be at the last index of nums2. Now that we have our pointers, let's step through our algorithm. What we want to do is we want to compare the element at a with the element at b, and whichever one is larger, we're going to place at our i index. In this case, a is at 3 and b is at 6. 6 is going to be greater than 3, so we're going to go ahead and place the 6 at our i index. And because we took that element, we're going to go ahead and decrement b, and we're going to go ahead and decrement i, and continue on to our next iteration. On the next iteration, we're going to compare what's at A with what's at B. In this case, what's at A is larger. So we're gonna go ahead and place that here at our ith index. Because we use an element at A, we're gonna get rid of that and go ahead and decrement A and decrement I. On the next iteration, we have a 2 at A and a 2 at B. In this scenario, the two elements equal each other. So for our case, we're going to go ahead and just take whatever is at the A. Since we took what's at A, we're going to go ahead and decrement A here and decrement I. On our next iteration, we have 1 and 2. And in this case, 2 is going to be greater than so we're gonna go ahead and take our two from here and decrement B and I. Now we ran into the scenario where B is now a negative one, meaning there's no more elements in our list. Thus, we have merged all of the elements into nums one. So our result will be one, two, two, three, six. You may be wondering why we stopped iterating when there are technically still elements in nums1. Let's go through a simple example to confirm why our algorithm works. All right, going over this first example, we're gonna compare what's at A with what's at B. In this case, it's pretty obvious that 20 is gonna be larger than 10. So we're gonna go ahead and place 20 where our I index is at. We're going to go ahead and decrement i, and once again, b is going to get decremented to negative 1, which is the same case as before. 
On the second example, A is still 10, but in this case, B is now 5. 10 is obviously greater than 5, so we're going to go ahead and place 10 here at our ith index. And because we went ahead and used A, we're going to go ahead and decrement A, which will make it a negative 1, and decrement I. Despite this index being negative, we'll still move on in our while loop because clearly there's still one element left in nums2 that needs to be merged. So on the next iteration, we actually don't compare both numbers because once again, this a is at a negative index. Instead, we go ahead and overwrite where i is at with b. That means we're going to decrement the b index. And when b is at a negative 1, that is when we know we can finally stop iterating. The time complexity is big O n plus m. And the space complexity is going to be big O 1 because we did it in place. Now let's go ahead and get to coding. First, let's initialize our pointer variables. a will be at the index of the last number that's not a 0 in our nums vector 1 b will be the index of the last number in our nums2 vector, and i will be the index of the last number in our nums vector. If you remember the equation, it's just m plus n minus 1. Next, we are going to keep looping as long as b is in bounds. And then we either pick the value at a or b, whichever one is greater. Or, in the case that they're both equal, we will just decide to opt for A like we did in our example earlier. If we pick A, we want to overwrite I with that number. And then remember to decrement A. If we pick B, then we want to go ahead and do something similar. Either way, we're decrementing I. And that's it for the code. Let's go ahead and take a look at the variant now. Okay, so the variant that's given is a little bit more ambiguous, but some things still remain the same. For example, we're still given two vectors, but this time they're list A and list B. We still want to merge both of these vectors in a non-decreasing order. One thing that's different is we're not given M and N like we were before. However, we are given the fact that list A is going to be double the length of list B. Given these new requirements, let's go ahead and go over an example. We'll still approach this problem using three pointers, but this time we need to work a little bit harder to figure out where each pointer is. Thankfully for us, I is still going to be at the last index of list A, which is great. B is going to remain at the last index of list B. A this time, however, is a little bit trickier. Recall that in the original leak code problem, A was simply the mth element minus 1. Since we're no longer given M, we need to do some quick maths. Because we know that list A is double the length of list B, can't we just divide the number of elements that are in list A by 2, which A equals 2? This tells us that A is at the second element in the list, which here is number 8. And obviously we're working with vectors and we want to get the index, so we're going to go ahead and have to compensate by subtracting 1. And there you go! Now we know that A is going to start right here. Now we'll go through the same logic as before. We're going to compare what's at A with what's at B. In this case, 8 is larger than 5, so we're going to go ahead and place 8 here. And since we used A, we're going to go ahead and decrement A and decrement I. On the next iteration, 1 is less than 5, so this time we're going to take what's at B. And since we took what's at B, we're going to decrement B and decrement i. On the next iteration, 1 is less than 3. So once again, we're going to take what's at b, we're going to go ahead decrement i, decrement b, and that is now at a negative 1, so we know we need to end our loop. Ultimately, list a is left with the sorted array.
The time complexity is big O n, where n is the number of elements in list A, and the space complexity remains constant space. On to the code. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is change the variable names for list A. Let's go ahead and now change the variable for list B as well. A, remember, is going to be the size of list A divided by 2. And then we do have to minus 1. B is at the end of list B. And I is going to be at the end of list A. And the rest of the code is actually going to remain the same. Thanks for joining me on coding this today. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Beep beep.